We're going to do one of those what's in the box on this episode of RC Guy Garage. I think it's too clean, too cleared off. So I think we should clutter it with something that's actually inside that box right there. I feel like I've had that thing for a couple of weeks because um, I probably have. Yeah, so let's open up that box. So if you're interested in seeing what's inside that box, kind of like I am, kind of in a sort of way, if you get my meaning. I actually did kind of uh, uh, open it just because um, something kind of sounded a little bit loose, but everything's all set inside. We actually haven't taken it out of the box, so technically I'm kind of still holding to my um, what's in the box rule. Hold tight because we're going to actually toss that up on the bench, and uh, we'll see actually what's inside that box. But uh, you know what? As a matter of fact, probably can't put it on the bench. Well, we'll put the parts individually up there anyway. So let's rip into it. What do you want, sweetie? Huh? So inside that uh, box, it says Fragile. Like I said before, I uh, kind of can't really fit the box on the bench. So we're going to do the unboxing on the ground and then uh, toss the stuff on the bench and check it out. So let's uh, bust into this box and see what we get in a... Uh, box of that size yeah you ready to rip into it i know i am let's rip so i'll take a couple of things off of here so you can actually see uh what's inside this box right here now as i had said before um this box actually is open uh but i actually i i i didn't take anything out of the box so i don't even know if i'm in frame well, anyways, me being in frame, that doesn't really matter. So, what's inside of a box uh, from this size? Obviously, obviously, you can see on the side it says "Made from China." Uh, pretty good size box. Uh, we're talking, what are we talking size wise here? Yeah, I know I'm dragging it out. I don't even know what my tape measure is. All right, well, never mind. <laughs> so, what's inside the box right here? Oh, hey, check that out. Little sticker pack. So maybe if you're uh, familiar, what? With what uh, this name brand is, uh, maybe you can kind of figure it out by, you know, what it says right there. Let's check out what's inside that box. Ta-da! <laughs> so inside the box, we've got a uh, instruction manual with a, uh, a kill switch. So we got a kill switch for a one-fifth gasoline-powered hobby engine, which is the HY32CC. And that looks like a couple of uh, air filters right there. And, uh, yeah, some pots. So here's the instruction manual for actually what's inside this box. So let's check it out. Now, what I was stating or what I was saying, right, was that I had actually opened this up because when I had picked up the box and brought it inside, uh, there was a certain amount of looseness. And I don't know if it's, you know, from, like, shipping or whatever's going on, but... Um, the zip ties that are uh, supposed to be attached to all four corners of this vehicle and then down to that box pad right there, all the zip ties are pretty much broken. So I don't know if this thing has seen some damage or what's going on. I don't think so. It does look like the exhaust pipe may have contacted the back side of there at one point, but it doesn't look like it's anything, you know, vicious. So uh, let's just uh, let's just see what's in the uh, in these boxes here. So. We got this box here, we got this box here, we got this box here. So let's see what's inside of these boxes first, and then we'll get to uh, what's right there. So first things first, uh, the instruction manual. And obviously, you know, you can see there were air filters there. It looks like it comes with two air filters. And then inside this uh, instruction manual box, or so bag, inside this instruction manual bag, You've got uh, what looks like it's a uh, fail-safe switch, uh, probably an antenna tube right here. You get the uh, user manual for the actual motor itself. Probably talks about um, break-in procedures and, and whatnot. I don't even know. This is the first time opening up one of these things. This is one of those things where this is something that my channel has been missing. Not only just my channel, but I have been missing. So years ago when I got into the hobby... Or when I started making money and being able to be into the hobby, that's more like it. Uh, I was actually able to uh, set myself up with a uh, quarter scale uh, roving jackrabbit. And it's something that, you know, I remembered having a blast with. 
But the only thing that, you know, was a deterrent was obviously being in my teens was um, transportation, you know, for that thing. Because uh, the only thing that I had was a uh, 79 Trans Am and it really didn't fit in the trunk all that well. And then um, just like the difficulty of, of trying to support myself, you know, with money and, and a job and, you know, chasing girls and, you know, all that good stuff. But anyways, whatever. So... Um, instruction manual. So we've got uh, the instruction manual for, uh, I guess if you don't know how to install the batteries, it shows you how to install the batteries in a uh, controller that comes with this thing, which uh, is a two, yeah, 2.4 gigahertz uh, controller. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. Uh, talks about the uh, servos, talks about brushless ESC, which this, this is not brushless, so that doesn't matter. Uh, that's kind of uh, a little interesting. Uh, doesn't really look like the same picture that... Uh, I don't know. Does that, does that look right? I mean, it doesn't look like the same vehicle. <laughs> well, anyway, it's probably just a basic manual that uh, comes with. Talks about, let's see, exceed, uh, yeah, not much. Talks about uh, LiPo batteries, talks about glow plug and fuel and engine adjustments, which um, this actually has absolutely nothing to do with this vehicle. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, talks about uh storage of lipo batteries all right so that has nothing to do with the vehicle what the hell kind of manual is this let's see is this the right thing nice all right so here's the real manual it's not even a manual this is basically a spare parts list so uh yeah here's your spare parts list so obviously what we know right away just by looking at in case you didn't realize when you get into a vehicle like this you kind of you kind of already should know what you're doing. You kind of already should know what you're getting into because when you're ripping a vehicle of this size, there's a lot of responsibility involved. It's not about tossing a battery in something and then just ripping it. This is a whole different animal when you get into a scale of this size, like a fifth scale gas. So, and that's what this is. So the first box we actually took out was this little guy right here. So we'll do it how we, how we did it. So inside this first little box right here. So inside the first box is the remote control. Uh, it's just a basic 2.4 gigahertz remote control, which, uh, I don't know, very, very basic. Uh, it even has a block off plate, looks like, for what used to be for uh, eight batteries. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with this remote control. We might use this, uh, we might not. It's actually another remote control that I've got, which we probably will end up using that as, uh, you know, this is just a basic, you know, radio and... And as far as, you know, my uh, what's in the box or OTB, this vehicle right here is going to be kind of like a combination of both. So I am going to show you what's in the box, but um, I don't know. I don't know how long we're going to run it uh, stock out of the box, I guess you want to say. So let's just uh, keep opening stuff and see what's inside these boxes. So like I said, um, it's it's a radio. That, that, that's all I got to say. It, it it probably works, and we'll probably just use it to rip it for a couple of times, and then uh, most likely we'll change it out and uh, switch it over to something else, and I have no idea what we'll do with this radio, but it's really kind of, uh, it's kind of bulky. So I've got another radio in mind that will probably like blow this thing away. Let's just put that back in the box. <laughs> and then the next box, which sounded like some metal stuff, See what's inside of this thing. Whoa. Alright. 
So more important stuff here. So I don't know whether if this is front or rear wheels. Uh, these may actually be the rear wheels to this thing. And these things are absolutely gigantic. Um, which is the reason why I got these. So if you look at these wheels right here, you can see that um, hex-wise, it's a match. So there was a reason why I actually got these paddle tires. And that's kind of like, uh, like the clue right here. So it looks like we've got the uh, we got the wing in this bag right here. Pretty substantial wing, nice and flexible. Good flex on that wing. Uh, ooh, nice. Actually, did come with a battery pack. I wasn't sure, so can't really tell. So it is a uh, it is a uh, NIMH uh, 2500 milliamp 6 volt battery pack that actually comes with the vehicle, so we'll actually have to charge this up. So let's just throw it on the charger right now. Comes with, you know, a, a basic little junk charger, which, uh, uh, nah, I'm not going to use that. I'm actually going to charge this right now with my, uh, with my good charger. You can actually see, uh, because it's got these multi-function plugs, it actually does have the uh, correct, uh, port to actually charge that battery and we're going to get that charged up right now all right so let's just set you up over here for a, set you up over here for a second to my uh charging station so we got it connected up and we're going to pick an imh and you can see it's set to auto at a two amp current charge Hit the start button, and then you can see the info right there. Looks like it already has 6.2 volts in it, charging at 2 amps, and we'll just let it do its thing. It'll charge it right up, and then uh, we'll be good to go. Back on the bench, these bags here. So it looks like it gives you a uh, baggie of a whole different uh, number of Allen wrenches. Obviously, you're probably going to need to adjust things on this uh, RC. It also comes with a spark plug slash, I'm assuming, wheel nut wrench also. This is aluminum. Not sure how long this is going to last for, but it should be all right. Um, yeah, just a basic, you know, aluminum wrench that you need to put on your wheels and take out your spark plug. So that's good for that. Next in this box, most likely it's just the other two wheels. Again, I'm not sure which is which. Oh, it looks like they're the same exact wheels. So, nothing else inside that box. So we had two more wheels, or two more tires. Actually, these look like the front. All right, so there we go. So we got our we got our rear wheels here. We got our front wheels right here, and uh, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what's inside the box other than the RC. So let's just uh, pop that out right now. It's obviously going to be pretty easy because the zip ties are already blown off it. So let's just pop that out and toss it up on the bench. So it should be actually be pretty easy. Oh, it looks like one zip tie actually is still connected. Just got a knife in there. There we go. There you go. That's what's inside. That's what's inside that box. Let's toss it on the bench. So there we go. So this is actually from a company called uh, Nitro RCX. Uh, it's actually the Exceed Barca. It is a four-wheel drive, 32cc gas-driven buggy. And obviously, one of the things that we're going to have to do concerning this vehicle is we're going to have to do the break-in procedure, just kind of like how you do a Nitro, but. This is a little bit different, and what I will tell you, because I've kind of been out of that uh, loop for quite a while, and there's been, you know, like a 25-year gap, or actually, wow, 25 years, it's actually been more than that. Holy crap. So because there's been like a massive gap between, you know, running a gas engine, um, it's kind of like a weed whacker motor, but not really. It's a more of a higher higher performance motor. 
So there's two people that I've actually kind of been uh, paying attention to. Uh, and there's actually one that's kind of coming up on the rise. Mets RC, you know who I'm talking about. That's you. Uh, you've got to get your videos out there on your rampage, man, because you've got some stuff coming up with that thing. It's a beast. So the two people that I'm talking about are Hybrid32494. He's actually got a ton of videos. I like how he does things. I like how he does his content. I also like how he's given Kevin Talbot a little bit of a... Uh, SHI, which is funny because it's that back and forth thing where hopefully all it's about is just them having fun. I do know that he was all bent out of shape because of, you know, the clickbait stuff, which I totally get and I'm not an advocate for clickbait either. Uh, I try not to do any kind of, you know, deceptive anything. I'm kind of more on the lines of hybrid myself. You try to put content out there that's kind of, it's it's got to be the truth, man. And when you're doing the clickbait stuff, I don't know, I just, whatever. To each his own. For Kevin Talbot, it works. For Pat, whoever else, that's awesome. You guys are great. Have a good time. But uh, I'm more in the lines of hybrid 32, 494. Uh, like I said, he's got a good channel. And then the other guy right here, which is uh, Steel City RC. I actually think he's a subscriber to my channel. I, at least I think I've seen him pop on a couple of the lives. Uh, he's another good guy. Uh, to check out his channel. Right now, he's sitting at 687 subscribers. So, if I could get some of my subscribers to kind of like bump over to his channel. If you want to talk about some uh, fifth scale content, this guy has got some content. Along with Hybrid, but it's not like Hybrid needs any help from my channel. He's already at he's already at 16,000 subscribers. So, But if you haven't checked out either of those channels, I'll leave links in the description. If you want to go check out their stuff. Uh, I think it's worth it if you're into these larger scale RCs like these guys are. Hybrid does other stuff too. I think that's why he's called Hybrid. Because uh, he like, Hybrid, you know, does kind of like all kinds of stuff. You know, it's not all about his Hybrid Prius. <laughs> Anyways, go check out those two guys. So let's get back into my channel and, and see, uh, see what we're looking at on this one-fifth scale Exceed Barca. So obviously it's literally just pulling like stuff off. <laughs> Pulling these little wraps off. Uh, these are 24 millimeter hexes, which, you know, a vehicle of this size, that's kind of what you expect. Uh, we're going to pop off the top here. You got a body pin that's right here. So you got a body pin to pop on the front here. You got a body pin on this side right here. And then you got a body pin on the back. So it looks like it's a uh, total of five body pins to actually get this body off, which is. Uh, it's 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 funny how kind of like flimsy ish this body is. So let's just uh, let's just pop those pins out and see what's inside here. So five body pins. Yeah, it's funny how flimsy feeling the, the shell is, but it's not like you need anything crazy, I guess. So the other thing that I had actually seen from Hybrid was um, he got a kit that actually electrified these lights right here. So I'm actually going to be electrifying those myself because, uh, yeah, I, I liked how it looked. I also want to do something towards the back. So we got to figure out what kind of light we can uh, put on the back side. Uh, if anybody has any ideas, as a matter of fact, I have an idea right now. So I almost just totally forgot about this. So this is a light kit for the um, the Traxxas Max. So who knows? Maybe we can take this light kit and uh, fit it onto that thing. Save me a couple of bucks. Uh, yeah, it actually might be pretty cool. We'll have to check this out. Oh, we just had a power up from Vector. Vector's doing more power ups. So it looks like we got uh, two uh, 20 gram, uh, 20 kilogram servos in there which is that both for steering no is it are you serious it's got that much steering all right so we've got two 20 kilogram steering servos in the front here we do have a tiny little servo right there that's obviously operating throttle and brake that thing man that thing is tiny compared to those front servos but granted, we probably don't need anything massive to um, 
you know, to operate, you know, the uh, the carburetor. Or the brake. I don't know, man, but the, it almost seems like the brake should be... almost seems like the brake should be something stout. There is a braking procedure that needs to... Uh, that this thing needs to go through. And what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up kind of reviewing uh, hybrid and Steel City RC. I want to see if Steel City RC has any uh, braking procedures. I don't know if he does or not. But uh, I know Hybrid just did kind of like one of these vehicles, or pretty close to it, um, probably about a year ago or something like that. I saw a couple of his videos recently. Uh, but yeah, let's just, uh, let's just, I don't know, keep going. Show you what's in this thing. I wonder if my stand will hold this thing. That'd be kind of interesting. Of course it does, because that stand was built. All right, so now you can see we've actually got it nice and elevated. All right, so front wheels, we're going to toss these on real quick. I don't know if I should be, like, loctiting things. I think that's one of the things, too, that uh, is kind of explained, is to go ahead and start loctiting stuff. But we're just going to kind of just put this together loosely right now. Uh, because we're just going to be doing a break-in on it, so I don't see the need to uh, lock tie anything just as of yet. Yeah, what if I take the nut off? So this thing would actually look like a this thing would look like a beast with these uh, rear tires on here. Look at that. Look at that thing. That thing with the paddles. Holy crap. Well, we're just going to throw the stock wheels on for now, but we obviously know that those fit. We're not going to be doing any ripping right now. Um, so that's why I'm not locked tight in these. I'm just kind of just tossing them on just to kind of get them on there uh, for now. Why is my stand spinning? I'm liking this thing. I'm liking this thing already. This thing is a beast. So pretty much, uh, there we go. There's your little spin of the one-fifth scale Barca from Exceed. So, um, yeah, next up, we're actually going to be uh, breaking this engine in. So let's just, uh, let's rip it. Jesus, this thing. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Oh, my God. Going to uh, put the wing on. We'll put the wing on right now. Just going over this thing. Uh, fuel tank is actually a quick release. Boy, I haven't messed with one of these cars in a long time. I mean, look at the thickness of that shock tower. Shock tower front and rear. Looks like we got a uh, diff chassis brace kind of sort of thing right there. Some kind of a brace. Um, I don't know, man. Massive servo saver, obviously. But I just can't get over that tiny little servo right there. I don't even know what the name brand is. That battery box right here. Oh, that's kind of a pain. Let me get into the battery box. I literally need my pliers to get that little pin out. Is that it? Is there another one? Looks like there was actually supposed to be a pin on that side. There is no pin. 
That's kind of interesting. It looks like there's also a wire caught right there. I'm not sure what that wire is. All right, well, let's just get this off of here. <laughs> Come on, get off! That's kind of a mess in there. That's all right. I guess that's kind of the way it kind of has to be uh, because of the way the switch is. Um, okay. Little, uh, what is this, a four channel, three channel receiver? Yeah, a little three channel receiver. So maybe we could put the lights on a channel. Oh, it says four channel. So it's a four channel receiver. What am I talking about? All right. Well, I don't know. So that's what's inside the battery box. Here's your, uh, here's obviously where your, uh, little NICAD battery or whatever it is, NIMH battery sits. Probably sits right into that, uh, little wire mess right there. So we're probably going to be, uh, cleaning this up a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's what we're looking at inside the battery box. We are missing a, um, we are missing a clip. That's kind of, uh, kind of crummy. Maybe it fell off in shipping. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. We'll fit it. We'll find another clip for that side right there. So you can see right there, it actually says this is a 32cc fuely motor, uh, gasoline plus 25% uh, stroke oil, and it says designed in Japan. Uh, what else? Maybe give you some thicknesses on these uh, shock towers, both the rear and the front. See what we're looking at for a thickness on that. Get out our little uh, trusty caliper here. So you've got uh, seven and a half millimeter on the rear, seven and a half, almost eight on the front. That must mean this one must be an eight too. Maybe I'm just not getting a good number. Yeah, something like that. Eight millimeter on the uh, eight millimeters on the rear uh, shock brace, and then obviously eight millimeters on the front shock brace. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, chassis thickness? How about that? We can get chassis thickness. Chassis thickness is about uh, 4.5 millimeters. This thing's just, it, it's a monster. You want to talk about having monsters on the channel? Uh, this is my gas monster compared to my uh, Losi monster right there. So now we've actually, so now we actually have two monsters. I guess you want to say, what do people say, in the house? So in the shop, we've actually got two monsters now. One's gas and one's electric. So anyways, uh, that's just a uh, what's in the box edition from RC Guy Garage. Now the next thing to do is just obviously make sure that this battery is fully charged. We're going to mix up some fuel today. And we're going to start the uh, break-in procedure. Uh, yeah, and then after that, we'll probably have to like... Loosen some screws, relock tight things uh, from I think hybrid. That's kind of one of the things that's fairly important is making sure that um, you lock tight everything. I think even Steel City said the same thing, but it's kind of like a known thing. Anytime you got you know an engine vibration type of deal, uh, you definitely want to make sure you lock tight everything. So we will go through this thing and we'll lock tight stuff, but that's after the break-in procedure because literally all I want to do is I want to fire this thing up today look at that thing that thing is just massive hey vector do you like it you don't know what do you mean you don't know let's uh let's just throw on the wing real quick while we're here he's looking at it look at him look at it I think it's too high for him to mess with. The 
This thing's going to be a blast, I can already tell. I am going to have some fun with this thing. So one of the things that I obviously noticed right away was uh, these these plastics are, are a slight bit deformed. So what I may do, uh, I may just grab my heat gun and maybe see if I can tweak these a little bit because uh, they're actually kind of like faced inboard. You see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Probably like from shipping or something. You can see like it's arced down. So I kind of want to just kind of pull that up a little bit and uh, make it so that that wing actually fits on better. So what I want to do is I just kind of want to heat up the plastic a little bit just so I can um, reform these pieces. Hopefully it won't take long. The plastic already getting nice and soft. Also, this wing is adjustable. I just realized that. This plastic's getting more malleable right now. That looks a lot better. Now just go after the other one. Now that one looks a lot better. Took a little bit more time on that one. Alright, let's just toss the wing on now and see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. Not perfect, but close enough. Lime, it's definitely better now. Yeah, that's good. 
good enough for now. If we got to fine tune it, we'll fine tune it later. It's not too bad. There's a little bit of a gap right there. There's a little bit of a gap right there. We'll uh, we'll fix that later. So for now, it's killing me to use this remote, but here's what it is. We'll just toss these batteries in here. Four double A's. At least we know it's got power. We know everything will be all set. I turn it on. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe it'll be fine. It just feels feels light. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? Looks like the camera mount will fit on this thing, too, so I don't know. Who knows? Maybe my mind is being changed. I definitely won't get confused on uh, what remote is which. I'll definitely know that this remote is actually for that thing. Ah!